All right, good morning, everybody. Hopefully nicely refreshed after your coffee. Yeah. Okay, before I start, a quick quiz. Does anybody know what this is? Or who knows what this is? Who said that? Okay, well, you look far too young to know what that is. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It's a, it's a camera case, <laughs> absolutely. And, uh, well, film. And uh, I'll tell you, and just to prove it, here it is here. It actually took me quite a while to find a place that sells it. And I wonder what happened to, I mean, these, these used to be in black, didn't they? So maybe the company that uh, made them in black, maybe they've gone out of business, I don't know. But uh, anyway, let's, uh, I'm going to take a, a little bit of a different approach. Uh, my, my discussion here, and it is a discussion, um, but unfortunately I haven't really got time for questions. Uh, but if you want to grab me outside and take the discussion further, then you know, please do. More do than Q&A. More than, than happy. Well. Q&A, there you go. Q&A is the spot for that. So doing more with less in a software-defined, data-driven world. So what I'm really going to talk about here is, is business and business effect and the need <coughs> to evolve to stay in business. Okay? So we're going to rapidly talk about software-defined, you know, IT, I mean a lot of you people, I've, I've been talking to some people outside there, we've got <coughs> IT managers, IT directors, I think we've got a couple of sectors here, retail, yourself retail? I've got a retail background and I've actually just been working with the Ministry of Justice. Ministry of Justice, okay, I'll keep quiet about that one. Um, and, and legal as well, any, any other sectors? No? Education, right, very good. Right, so moving on. So digital transformation, okay? Well, it's here. It's operating across bimodal data centers, and I'll talk about that in a bit more detail. Server rooms, branch offices, it's everywhere, okay? Your competitors and their competitors are evolving, yeah? We're evolving as, as, as a digital generation, as people, as users, as consumers. It's survival of the fittest, yeah? New platforms are connecting millions of people and customers end users and they're disrupting traditional business models um, you know one that comes to mind immediately and uh, I think they're worth about 50 million dollars now is Uber yeah and they don't even own a taxi what they're doing they're valued on their connections not on you know assets or buildings <coughs> how many employees they've got they're valued on how many connections they have yeah anybody here use Uber yeah yeah so not a good time to be buying a black Taxi cab, is it? Yeah? Think about it. Disruptive. Right. However, technology, I mean, what's the point of technology if it doesn't improve end user customer experiences? You know, Uber, you know, I, you know, you're getting a good customer experience out of that. Uh, we've got other examples Airbnb. Anybody use Airbnb? Yeah? yeah? I've got one um, which, which I like is, uh, is Ringo for um, car parking at the station. So what I used to do, I'd buy my ticket and then I'd run back to my car, put the ticket in the windscreen, run back only to miss the train. Now I just, a couple of clicks before I leave the house and I'm, I'm done, you know, perfect. My customer experience has been enhanced. So what's the point? This man got it, which is why he was successful, okay? Which is why Apple is still successful. Okay, you've probably heard this one before, you know, software eating the world. And um, companies that get that, you know, they're the ones that will get the most out of business. They're the ones that will evolve. Companies that don't understand that every process can be defined in software, you know, they're the ones that are going to decline. And talking about decline, um, you know, here's a few examples here. But when I think about this, uh, I think to myself, well, you know, why didn't Woolworths become Amazon? Yeah? I mean, let's face it, they had the distribution, they had the supplier relationships, they had product lines, you know. Why don't it just like the penny drop? If we start selling online, we can sell more and we can sell 24 seven. Jeff Bezos started off in a bungalow and his first innovation was to have a table to do the box packet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's amazing, it's a true story. Kodak, I think about Kodak, I think, well, you know. Why is it that it takes me, you know, th these things used to be ubiquitous, they used to be everywhere, okay? That's quite funny because it you know, went on holiday and what's this? No, this is 36 exposures. Okay, so I could take 36 pictures on holiday. Remember that? Eh? 36 pictures. And then when I get home, I've got to take it to Boots, get it developed, and the week later, I get to see my holiday snaps. How archaic! Yeah. Yeah. My wife at the moment, she's in Spain, and I know she's in Spain 
Not that I've got a tracker on her or anything, and she's not an advert, uh, not yet, but I know she's in Spain because of Facebook. So she's taking pictures and instantly uploading them onto Facebook. And she's not that good at Photoshop, I'm sure it is Spain. Um, Blockbuster, another one. And, and actually Kodak, no, let me just continue on Kodak. So thinking about Kodak, I think to myself, well, I would, you know, I was using their first digital cameras um, in the sort of mid to late 90s. And they were, you know, they had some early ones out there. And now what I think to myself is why didn't Kodak become the de facto technology in everybody's smartphone, okay? Why did, why did that not happen? Why did these people not think about it? Um, Blockbuster, you know, so, you know it, it really does sound funny now. You know, you get in your car, you drive to the, to the video store, you may, have, you may be lucky and get the latest blockbuster film before somebody else has got it, you then go home in your car, you then watch it, only to come back the next day to give it back. You know, it sounds like, it sounds like complete madness today. So if I tell that to my kids, you know, it's like, this is how we used to watch films. They're like, Dad, are you smoking something? Yeah, you know, you download, you stream. Um, Blackberry, anybody here got a Blackberry? Yeah. One guy, one guy out of a whole room of people. Hey, that, that says it all, doesn't it? Yeah. So why did yeah, what happened to BlackBerry? What what, what went you know, what went wrong with those guys? And Nokia as well. Yeah. They put all their faith into product. They didn't think about platform. Okay. And that's a term you're going to hear you say more and more is platform. Um, Walmart's got superseded by a platform called Amazon. Yeah. Blockbuster got superseded by a platform called Netflix. Kodak. Again, if they'd thought platform, they could have thought Snapchat. Yeah? They could have thought we will be the photography you know, platform for the whole world, take pictures digitally, upload them, and we will host them and you can share them with your friends, etc. etc. If they'd thought about pictures they would have, and thought platform, they could have put the two together. But they didn't. And Blackberry, well, the biggest problem they had was uh, hanging on to that QWERTY keyboard, in my opinion, because software development <coughs> is all about real estate. And what have I got here? I've got real estate. Okay? If I chop half of it off with a QWERTY keyboard, I've lost that real estate. And I've lost my developer community, lose my developer, developer community, and I've lost relevance. So, and then uh, I stuck on the bottom there, um, you know, British, British home stores. I mean, that's been around since, uh, ooh, anybody know? Is it the eight, 1920s? I think it's been around since about 1926. A long time, anyway. More, you know, longer than I've been on this ground. Um, why did they fail? Well, maybe that's because they, they just don't analyse their data. Maybe that's because they just don't know what lines are selling, what lines are not selling. Maybe they don't know how good or bad their distribution is. Or maybe their reports come out every month. But in retail, you know, you'll know yourself, you know, a month is a very, very long time in retail. A day is a long time in retail. You need answers and information now. You can't wait for a month end report. Okay, so yeah, they're gone. Superseded, okay? So, sort of setting the scene here. So, what are the bad, you know, what's, what's, what are the warning signs for business? Um, maybe you see some of these warning signs and you, you know, maybe it will ring a bell somewhere. And if it does, you know, take it back with you and think about it. Now, if you've got products and services that are being superseded by digital um, alternatives, um, you know, we've got legal uh, sector here. Uh, I guess there's, you know, lots and lots of things are going online. Um, you know, I find out my wife's not in Spain, I can go online and get a divorce. Yeah, I can do it myself. It's happening, isn't it? Your industry has been disruptive. Yeah, and that could all be handled by somebody in another country because we're all globally connected. Yeah. Okay, have you got falling sales and reduced product and service popularity? You know, people not loving your brand anymore because they're buying elsewhere. Um, reduced customer footprint, you know, again, more relevant to retail, I suppose. You know, not so many people walking through the door because they're buying it online. Um, or, that could be a taxi driver. You know, I'm sat here, you know, I've had my bacon butty, I've had my cup of tea, I've now had another bacon butty and another cup of tea, and I just don't have the people getting in my cab anymore because they're all using this new thing called Uber. Right. And so it goes on, new digital competition, bits replacing, have you heard that term before? Bits replacing atoms, yeah? And that's the same, in, you know, particularly in media and digital photography. Um, but, you know, going forward, why, you know, with, with 3D printing, who used to know? I can order stuff on Amazon and get it printed at home. Yeah. That could happen. Uh, lack of ability to respond, reinvent, innovate, taking digital initiatives. That's the real one I want you guys to think about. Okay, and that's where data and data analysis and data science comes into stuff. But it also is where the agility 
of your IT department comes into it as well, which is where people like Exponential E can help you. Okay, and then inability to continue analyse and prove productivity, and again, this comes down to data analysis. Right, moving on quickly. Um, so platforms, platforms replacing products and pipelines. I'm giving you a couple of examples. You know, Netflix being one, Amazon being another, um, Uber. Uber is just a platform. Um, Steve Jobs, um, you know, he got that message. I mean, he didn't do so well with um, Apple computers and with their operating system because it was closed. Microsoft did a whole lot better with their operating system because it was an open platform for people to develop applications. And no doubt in your business you have many applications that have been developed bespoke, but they sit on Windows, okay? So it's a platform, and it's a platform where things can be developed. Customers receive improved services, apps become, but yeah, software redefines. So it's a bit like me, you know, I can get my parking ticket instantly. I don't have to get a physical, go to a physical parking meter, you know, get out a bit of paper, take it to my car. And some of my daily examples, I did take one of these off Gary. No, he's not here. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, um, yeah, so Nest, uh, my house is protected with, you know, digital smoke alarms. Um, but Google bought Nest, not because of the, the smoke alarms, they bought Nest because it's a platform. And it's a platform to provide household automation, okay? And I'll give you a funny quick story about that. Um, a couple of years ago, I was in, um, in Boston, and my, because it's a cloud-enabled device, you know, my, my phone over in Boston is, is vibrating, I've got an alert message, I'm, I'm, my house is on fire. And they go, well, what, what's going on? And what it was, I thought, hang on a minute, uh, eldest son, he's, he's, I'll text him. So I text my eldest son, what are you doing? He texts me back, um, oh, Dad, yeah, I, I, I thought you'd be contacting me, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, okay, um, and what he was, what he, because I knew this, what he does, he would put something under the grill, then go upstairs and he's back on his gaming computer, forget about it, and then the smoke alarm goes off, and I got him, yeah? So he's like, Dad, how did you know? Dad's always watching. Yeah, got him, got him. Spotify, um, I haven't bought a CD in, I don't know, a year and a half, two years, yeah? When's the last time anybody here bought a CD? A real one. Hmm? A real one. A real CD, yeah, yeah. But it's interesting, isn't it? Because that's, just, that's, not, that's not just the CD, but that's also the people that make the plastic cases, the people that do the aluminium that goes into the CD, the people that press it. You know, there's a whole industry that's being disrupted there. It's not just about the music, it's about all the bits <coughs> of people that go into making a physical CD. Bits replacing atoms, okay? Amazon, I'm not going to talk about that one because, well, I will do. Uh, I'm a guy, I hate shopping, yep. If I want something, I think about what I want, I think about where I'm going to get it, and if I can get that instantly, while I'm sat on the sofa with a beer watching the telly, fantastic, that's happy days, that's agility, that's speed, yeah. Good, and then it arrives the next day. Perfect, I haven't got to get in the car, park somewhere and all that rubbish. Um, Airbnb, uh, started off a few years ago, it's now worth $25 billion and it doesn't own a hotel room, yeah? Do you think these guys are worried about Airbnb? Yeah, they should be. Every hotel should be worried about Airbnb. And the reason it's called Airbnb, I think it started off in San Francisco, San Francisco and the, uh, you know, the, you know, the, the, people, the people who had this um, apartment, they're looking at you know, ways of getting money. Oh, we've got a room, we can rent out a room, well, we haven't got a bed, well, we've got some blow-up mattresses. And that's where the Air, Airbnb comes from, is blow-up mattresses. Um, why are they valued at that? It's about connections again. They built a platform for people to connect. People, you know, who want a room, people who have a room, they build a platform to connect and they're valued by their connectivity. Um, AO.com, has anyone used AO.com? Yeah? Two guys at a pub. It's not a joke, it's uh, serious. Two guys at a pub, 2009, one of them bets the other, I bet you can't sell appliances online, I bet I can. And in 2009 they started it up. And now it's a multi-million pound um, business, um, selling appliances, selling TVs. Um, do you think covers are worried? Yeah, they should be. Um, are they, do they deliver a better, improved customer service? And remember I said, you know, there's no point in doing this unless you create improved customer service. Yes, they do. Christmas, my oven breaks down. Um, I had such a terrible experience in covers, a physical shop last time. I didn't go there. So I went straight on to AO and watched some videos, had a good experience, you know, the whole thing was pretty seamless. In, you know, in about 10, 15 minutes, I'd selected what I want, I'd ordered it, uh, the next day it arrived. And it actually arrived at 7.30 in the morning, which I thought was a bit over the top, but I knew it was coming because I'm getting text messages. So, um, 
I didn't get dressed. I did greet the guys in my uh, in my dressing gown, but uh, they, uh, I, I guess they'd seen it all before. Uh, Netflix. I don't need to talk about that one. Um, you know, again, you know, bits and police and adults. Right. So let's just talk a bit about you guys now, about IT departments. Yeah. And who, uh, you know, who in here has still got the the business and the IT department? Yeah, like two separate entities. I mean, you all get your paycheck from the same people, but it's like two separate entities. And the business doesn't include IT in the decision making, yeah, then the strategic big button decision making, you know, you're sort of left out there at arm's length because you're not seen as making anything, you're not seen as adding value, you're seen as a, uh, as a cost department. Um, what you really are is the Department of Innovation, yeah? Given the chance, get a seat at the table, Department of Innovation. So companies that really don't include IT department in events because they don't sell anything. Yeah. Grinds, grinds my gears, and when I was in IT management, um, you know, ground my gears then. Um, businesses who absorb the IT department and work together, they're the ones who succeed. And we talk about big data. Big data, any big data strategy or any data analysis strategy will fail yeah, if it's just kicked over to the IT department. Yeah? What it needs to be is business driven. It needs to be business driven so it's got the right business value and it's got the right business insights. So that can then be aligned with strategic um, you know, ways forward. Otherwise, you know, you just you took it over and it's like, yeah, 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 yeah we're, we're going to do this great report. Well, yeah, what are we going to do with it? So it has to be business driven, the two have to work together. Um, okay, another evolution. Um, I almost cringe because there was an evolution one on the, on the last slide deck, but never mind. Uh, okay, so as business evolves, we need to evolve and operate by modal IT. So what I'm talking about here, you've probably heard the term before, and I apologise for that, is that we're very much, you know, having to keep the lights on. I'm, I'm on this mode, and yeah, I have worked in server rooms like that. Um, but yeah, you know, IT has evolved over many years. Yeah, it's typical. But however, the business is wanting more and more of this. They're wanting to evolve, they're wanting to move forward, they wanted to keep ahead of competition, but we've still got all of this in the background. And that, what that results in, what that means, it means that you've got long, complex projects. And also projects get delayed because guess what? You know, a set one comes up and a P1 comes up, you've got to react to that. You know, IT, you know, generally is very reactive because hey, the email server's gone down. Off you go with the project work, you're not being agile, you're not being uh, you know, giving efficiency to the business. Um, yeah. It's high risk if it fails, it's slow to respond, flexible, tightly governed, limited mobile capability, limited scalability. So that's, that's the picture on the left, okay? And that's very, you know, um, hopefully a lot of you can subscribe to that and understand that. But IT has sort of organically evolved over years, and that's what we see. However, what the business is looking for and what a, a successful business needs, you know, nobody wants to be another British Home Stores or another Woolworths. They need the ability to respond to business quickly. Yeah? Short software iterations. No longer taking six or 12 months to get a software release out. Use modern software development um, capabilities. Uh, I mean, I, you know, I, get, I get software on this all the time and I just click and it updates. You know, little small chunks rather than huge big iterations that take months and months to go out. Uh, when I first started in, in IT, I used to work for, for Volvo in the motor industry, and I would look after uh, their AS400s out in, the, um, out in the dealer branches. And it would take me six months to get a software update out, because I was the constraint. It would take me six months to drive around the country and do it. Okay? So our big innovation there was to bring it all into a data center consolidate it, and then we could do software iterations and changes over the weekend. Yeah, fantastic, six months to a weekend. So, you yeah, know, it's all about doing things quicker. Um, you tend to find in agile companies, you know, they, 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 they take, um, they're less governed. I'm not saying they're unsafe, but in some respects they're, they're less governed. They don't tend to have the same sort of traditional IT um, compliance hierarchy. They tend to look at working in better, more flexible ways. Um, definitely more connected, you know, so if, if, if your application, if you can be more connected, um, all the better. Um, definitely they, they bring in more data. Uh, so I'll give you an example, a company ourselves at EMC worked with um, in the Middle East, um, airplane company. And um, I, didn't, I didn't know this, but um, 
it's interesting when you have conversations with people what, what, what you learn. So when planes fly through, um, through storms, you know, thunderstorms, etc., cetera, et cetera um, they have to, by law, be grounded and checked out. Yeah? And what that traditionally means is that the, train, the, the, train, the plane goes into a hangar, and then guys with scaffolding and ladders and all this, you know, they, they physically go around and inspect it. Yeah? Now what that means, it means that the plane is grounded not earning money, which is a bad, you know, it's a bad day in the office when that's happening. So we, we've worked with, uh, with a couple of companies now uh, because EMC, as well as doing you know, big storage, and IMC, <coughs> we also do big data, data science, and, and, and a lot of um, digital type solutions. And the solution we came up with was um, the plane still goes in a hangar, but it's turned around very, very quickly because we have a drone that flies around it. The drone captures the digital information that then goes into a computer and it's analyzed, okay? Result being, plane up out, out it goes, and uh, everyone's happy. It saves a lot of money, a lot of money. We talked about, you know, you know, if, if you're spending money to save money, that's a good spend. Yeah, that was a big one. Okay. Um, also, what you tend to see in um, in new applications and, and you know, sort of web scale applications is the ability to fail is built in. Yeah. So the application isn't reliant on, um, you know traditional ways of failing over, um, you know, maybe, a, maybe a, you know, a clustered server set, the application itself can deal with it by, by design, and then web scale. So what we're, seeing in, you know, what we're seeing now is companies wanting to move from what we call mode one to mode two, but in the meantime, they're having to operate you know, both as they evolve. The ones that don't evolve, well, that's another story. So what are people wanting? Speed and agility. Yeah. So ourselves at, at EMC, you know, we, we work hard in research and development, and we work with a lot of um, big organisations, listening, talking, testing, evaluating, and evolving our product sets to basically give speed and agility. So, uh, yeah, I'm a I'm a pimp. I give out speed. Yeah, that's my job. So we have some um, fantastic flash storage solutions. Rapid transactions needed for big data applications, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We also help organisations develop a DevOps culture. Have you heard that term before, DevOps? Yeah, a bit overused. Um, again, you know, it's amazing because you read all this stuff in the in the IT press, and everybody has a has a definition or an opinion or, or something, and a lot of it is blah blah blah. It's all about bringing your operations department and your development department together and getting them collaborate. It's as simple as that. Yeah. Um, so when I, again, when I worked at, um, you know, back at Volvo, um, I moved across into development and um, we ended up sitting together. We collaborated and it was happy days, we did many, many good successful projects. One way of helping the collaboration is to, is to have a service catalogue. It could be as simple as a spreadsheet and it could be as simple as, a, as, as an automated process behind it. But DevOps is just about collaboration between two teams. Yeah? So if you remember that, next time you're reading DevOps, this DevOps app, collaboration is the key. If you don't have collaboration, you don't have DevOps. Agreed service catalog, good. Fantastic if the developers can select stuff themselves and then automation kicks in and it self provisions, yeah? They haven't had to you know, write an IT ticket, take the IT guy off a project to deliver it and then get it a week later. They can get it instantly and they can be productive. Guess what, developers cost a lot of money. Uh, rapid provision, and talked about that, automated repeatable tasks, okay. Um, at EMC, we've also worked hard to help organisations do more with less. And so we we have an organisation within us called VCE. Have any of you guys heard of VCE? No? Nope. Uh, well, Expo we have because they, you know, they, they use a lot of their, their stuff and converge infrastructure. So the good news about this, it's all about doing more with less. It's about not building it yourself. It's about having it ready built and shipped in. And that then leads to a software-defined data center. And a software-defined data center, how many of you guys are using VMware? One, two, yeah, a lot of you, most of you, okay. Well, that's software-defined servers, you're already doing it, yeah? So forget about a new term, software-defined data center, you're already delivering servers in, in software, that's great. Take that to more levels, networking and storage in software, and you get in somewhere. Why is it good news? Because if it's defined in software, you can automate it, okay? If you have to physically build something, do you remember, you know, Atoms become bits. VMware, you're doing it already. You know, you've got bits instead of atoms, and you can deliver it quickly, you can replicate it, 
you can have an automation process behind it. With a physical piece of tin, a lot more difficult to do that. Okay. And we also have you know, scale out solutions as well. So if you are into, uh, you know, as your business develops and evolves and grows, and it needs to collect data in many different ways, particularly what we call object data. Um, so object data can be, um, you know, like a PDF <coughs> file. It can be a picture. It can be a, um, it can be a news feed. It can be social media. It's not your normal structured data that you tend to get within um, within a database, you know, a database schema. Okay. And object data has data has what's known as metadata, so it's information about the data. So, for example, um, I, I broke my hand um, a year ago. I don't know how I did it, but when I went into hospital, they, they, they said I've been fighting because it was a it was a, a fracture across the knuckle. They said I haven't been fighting, and they they, they, they they said you have, and we'll show you the um, you know we'll, we'll show you the picture. So I'm expecting to have one of those you know things you know sort of X-ray film that you put up on the you know, to get the light through it and that. And they take you to a, to a screen, and there it is. They bring it up, boom, done. And there's a picture of my hand with, with the fracture, uh, known as a boxer's fracture. And I thought, okay, fair enough, you know, you guys are right, but I still haven't been fighting. Um, but then tagged to it is metadata, okay? And that's object. And again, we have some solutions around that. Okay, so I'm going to change gears a bit now, and I've also changed the colours of the slides to keep it interesting. Yeah, we've gone to black, in case I've noticed. I'm going to talk a bit about flash storage, a bit about converged infrastructure, get on to a bit about big data and what it means in business and, and a roadmap to big data, something for you guys to think about. Talk a bit about these guys, and uh, I'm going to it's over to the next guy and lunch. Yeah? Okay, I've got to speed up. Right, so flash. Um, yeah, flash is pretty big in the marketplace. Put flash with smart software and you get agility. Yeah. So we've we've been working hard with our flash storage solutions and very, very quickly. Um, okay, so here's traditional storage, traditional spinning disk. This is what you've got. Here is flash storage. Look at the difference, yeah? This looks like something like the art now, doesn't it? It's quite funny. Uh, you know, this, this runs at uh, you know thousands of IOPS, this runs at 180 IOPS. So to get speed and bandwidth, I've got to like bolt lots of those together. So that's that's the big difference there. Um, what does it mean to you in, in business? It means your databases, your month ends, your day ends can now be done, you know, during the day. Yep. And you can also increase productivity of your business and your team. Just a few examples here from using flash storage to accelerate. Um, you know, we've got uh, yeah stuff being done in minutes. Uh, Extreme IO, that's, that's our product here. Real time reporting, okay? So the warehouse managers know what they've got immediately. So, not, not waiting for the end of day report, they can understand and get it now. And uh, an organisation in the UK called Bailey Gifford, they've reduced their footprint by not having lots and lots of spinning disks, but by having flash storage uh, by 70%, and their TCO, $3.7 million. Yeah? Why? Well, they've saved a whole load of money in what we call licensing because they have a smaller infrastructure and their developers are 40%. They've got 100 developers and their developers are now 40% more efficient. So it's like having you know, 40 more developers. So you can imagine you know, big cost savings. So having the right infrastructure behind your data to drive that data is very important and can, uh, because nobody has time for this. Yeah? When you guys spend many hours in a data center or server room building stuff, it's not fun, is it? Yeah, it's not fun. <coughs> That's why converged infrastructure, you know, ready built, is the way forward. And what we have, we have a complete end-to-end -end offering from EMC. So we have blocks, which is um, a mixture of um, storage, physical storage, physical blade servers, and VMware. Then we have racks, which brings in software-defined storage. So the storage is, is, is like a modular base. You, know, you get a storage node and just bolt it on, bolt it on, bolt it on, and scale out exponentially. Um, and then we have appliances. So in one of these appliances here, they're quite, quite amazing, really. There's four servers. There's four VMware servers, four VSX servers. And in one of these two U appliances, a bit like a data center in a, in a, in a briefcase, I can host as many as 200 virtual machines, for example. And that's quite incredible. And I'm not stood there building, building myself. I can also give it to these guys and they can host it for me. You know, very, very uh, rapidly and quickly. Speed, agility, efficiency. Okay. 
It's all about the data. Let's get back on the track with uh, you know, data analytics and, and the big data team. So data, you know, it's nothing new. We've been um, running databases and analyzing data um, for a long time. You, know, you can go back to the abacus of analyzing data. But data has traditionally and is descriptive, okay? So you get a daily report, what's it it's told us what we've done that day. We get a month end report, it's told us what we've done that month, yeah? It's descriptive, it's, it's past tense. It doesn't do a lot for me, you know, looking forward. Um, what's being done, how much we've sold, what's the pipeline, etc., etc. And it's based on structured data and structured data schemas, okay? So if you think about um, a, a database file, it's columns and rows. That's the database schema. If I want to do more and change it, well, so that's, a, that's a big database change, that's a schema change. It's not something I can just do on the fly. Big data, futures, yeah? The value, when we talked about value earlier, the value is futures, what you do with it. Predictive data analysis. So one thing to take away with you today, if nothing else, what you're doing at the moment is descriptive. What you could be doing going forward, predictive. Why do we want predictive? Because we don't want to be Woolworths, we don't want to be Kodak, we don't want to be Netflix, um, you know, everybody else. We want to have the ability to understand the trends and the external forces, and we want to build a platform for data science. Yeah? So the data can be looked at, it can be analysed, working with the business and under the you know, business involvement, because if we just think it's over to the IT department, you know, the answer is not necessarily going to be what the business needs. So the business needs to be the owner of any data strategy. Yeah? And I've been there, I've been there where I've just had things chucked over to me, and it's like, you give it back, you spend months working on it, and it's like, really, guys, that's not what we want. Okay, well, just tell me. Um, also, what you tend to find in big data is the ability to sense and work unstructured data from many, many sources and devices. It's extensive, yeah? You can extend it. And you hear Internet of Things. So if I think about manufacturing, um, you know, we've now got the ability to, you know, plug in various sensors, various actuators, pull off information from that. I gave the example of the hospital with, with my hand. You know, that's, that's data that can be, you know, extensive. It's, it's in an unstructured format. Um, another way to you know, think of data as well is how you can capture more and more. Um, this brings me on to here, the big data maturity index. Now this wasn't done by myself, I thought by myself. We have a, a guy at EMC called Bill Schmalzel. I hope I've said that correctly. And uh, yeah, he's, um, he, he's an old guy like me and he's a big data guru. Um, he's come up with this model. And what the model is, it, it sort of defines where people are, where they can go, where they need to go for their business to evolve. And that's an important thing. So we're down here at the minute, business monitoring, you know, of our data warehouses, um, our you know, daily reporting, our monthly reporting, etc., etc. Moving on from that is we should be thinking about new ways of gathering data that give value to the business. Okay? And that could be, um, you know, if you're in retail, that could be you know, a loyalty card, so you can look at trends. Um, that could be if you're manufacturing, look at how you can sense the various processes, you know, from powder to pill if you're in pharmaceuticals. Okay? Look at how you can gather information. Uh, I mean, like a, a company that I, I work with do um, do wireless, so in, in stadiums and cafes and various places. And one way, um, you know, as well as doing the wireless, they are, they now gather information and they sell that information. Yeah, and they sell that information to marketeers and advertising and that and the other. So what they've been able to do is to optimise a business model and then monetize that data. Yeah, be great if you can do that. The Nirvana, at the end of it, is because you've got this data, because it's predictive, because it's understanding trends, and it's understanding where you are, and giving you ideas on where you need to go, the Nirvana is business metamorphosis, okay? So, getting back to, to, to uh, the Blockbuster, if they'd had this roadmap, the light bulb would have came on and said, guys, yeah. you've seen this thing called YouTube? We really need to be streaming our videos, yeah? Well, we're going to be superseded. So that's all about metamorphosis. Um, Ford Motor Company has recently invested $200 million in, in EMC to help them metamorphosize, yeah? Because they see themselves going forward, not as a manufacturer of vehicles as cars, but as a provider of connected devices that just happen to drive along the roads, yeah? Well, it's how I have a on it's pretty spin move there. Um, so business meta metamorphosis. If you can do that, if you go from a, a critter to a, a you know to a butterfly, 
fantastic, but data and data analysis will help you get there. Okay, um, anybody got a hippo in their organization? Yeah? It's funny, I, I, I stuck that one in on, on the train on the way down and uh, it, it made me laugh because I don't know if any of you guys remember Reginald Perrin. And every time you think of his, his mother in law, he sort of visualise a, a hippo. So I, I did have to, the highest paid person's opinion, yeah? So what traditionally tends to happen in organisations, and maybe this is what, what's been going wrong with um, British home stores, is that uh, you know, business change and evolution is, comes down to the highest paid person's opinion. And that's not a good thing, is it? Because how can he know, how can he drive, how can he have the insight in today's rapidly changing world? He can't. So business success grows on the foundation of data fed by system speed, efficiency, and agility. Okay? Now they're my words, I didn't get them out of a book, but that's what I believe. So if you've got the data, and that data can be analyzed quickly, efficiently, and provide agility with the systems that can do that, then you, know, you don't really need the, uh, the hippo. And good business is data driven and doing more with less in a software defined world. Okay? So, in summary, transformation to the modern data center services. Yeah, business, uh, you heard me say efficiency, speed, and agility many, many times. That's what we at the EMC really believe business needs. That's what we work with, with our partners, that's what we work with, with our products, and that's what we're working to drive <coughs> as an organization. We understand business needs to reduce the cost, footprint, keep the data center cost down, ease of man management, simplicity. Uh, in, in fact, you know, that was mentioned right at the beginning, reduce need for efficiency, do more with less. You know, these are, you know, this is all our, you know, this is what we believe, it's our mantra, okay? But on the roadmap to big data, you know, there has to be, you know, the need for the business to evolve, okay? There has to be a big data strategy. It's no good saying, hey, big data, we've got big data. No, it has to be driven by the business and the IT working together collaboratively. Because if the two are two different ends of the uh, ends of the room, it's just not going to happen, and it's not going to deliver the business modernisation, and it's not going to deliver the business metamorphosis that will be required at some point along the journey. Okay? So you know, do you remember valves in the TVs and the radios? They became transistors. Do you remember transistors? Well, they became silicon chips. Yeah. Not a good day if you're a valve manufacturer or transistor manufacturer. <coughs> Things change. Yeah. Okay. So. Exponentially, well, these guys, you know, working with ourselves, they have the ability to help you on that road to that transformation. And happy to have conversations outside. Um, you know, they can help you with their hosted, you know, agile cloud services. Yeah. A lot of you people, are, I, mean, I was talking to yourself earlier. You're using exponentially for all your IT, which is which is fantastic. You know, you've realised that you can you can get that delivered and then bundled and packaged. Brilliant. And we'll hear some more about that from uh, the next speaker, who I can't see at the moment, but he's here somewhere. Um, right, accelerate business decisions with flash storage. You know, remember, you know, credit card size things. Yeah. Well, these guys can help you with that. They can help your databases run at the speed of light. Provide scale out targets for big data. Yeah, I mean, big data isn't about lots and lots and lots of data. But as the data grows and it's getting feeds from new resources, these guys have solutions that can be targets for that data, so it can be worked. Enabling you to do more with less and freeing up your critical resources. What I tend to see in IT departments, and I was probably, you know, myself, is you see many, many um, constraints within IT. And that constraint may just be one person, you know, maybe his name is Brad, and everything has to go through Brad, and he's involved in every project and every P1 and every S1. You've all got a Brad, yeah? Brad is a constraint. If you can offload some of that stuff to these guys, you can then free up Brad to do some more interesting stuff but more productive stuff that will help the business evolve. What's the point of having Brad involved in every change in every P1 and S1 when he should be helping working with the business? Okay? So with these guys you can remove those constraints, you can enable your business to move to the fast lane, the overtaking lane. Yeah? And at that, that's me. I hope Thank I didn't you. overrun too much. Thanks for your time.